okay, the first month of shows may not have gone well for me, but they've all been building to this. Welcome to the Royal Rumble. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the 04 War, a TW 2020 network stay between me and Stuart Irvine. He's Smackdown, I am Raw, but tonight we come together for the first ever pay-per-view, sorry, 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 premium live event. Sounds a bit, sounds a bit odd, I know, but it is the Royal Rumble from 2004. Of course, the winner of 2004 Royal Rumble in real life, redacted. Um, isn't in this database. So it's going to be brand new. We know that SmackDown's going to have the Rumble winner, but there's big matches on the card as well. Cruiserweight Championship's on the line. A new United States Champion will be crowned. Intercontinental Championship also on the line and both World Championships on the line. Big matches. And we are going to hopefully have a hell of a show. We come together here. We've come together. Let's see what we can do. Okay, we open the Royal Rumble with some pre-show matches. Let's just see what some of the guys on the card that we haven't necessarily used that well or, or haven't used as much. Let's see what they're doing. And we open up with a Raw match, tag team action. London and Spanky, we need a name for them. We need a name. Versus Akio and Tajiri, who are part of Kyo Dyer Heels. I don't know, Heels Stable. We'll use it. This ain't bad, you know. Paul London put in a 59. Tajiri, 57. Those two could have a pretty good match. 45 for Spanky, 41 for Accio, 57 altogether. London and Spanky get a win. That's not bad, Stu. Not bad at all, actually. I mean, to be fair, it's like, 50, I think 57. I mean, to be fair, I've been using Landy. Uh, I'm going, I'll call him Kendrick. Uh, London, <laughs> Kendrick. I'm not I will Spanky. not say that name. <laughs> I know. I call him by the names I remembered them by. But, um, uh, like, but, like, um, like Volta, yeah? Anyway, anyway. Oh, why did you have to bring that up? Go on, go on. <laughs> But um, yeah, it was good. Uh, Fifty-seven. I think that's well, it was. I mean, they're both your guys, like mm. they're all your guys. But was that good? Do you think? That's a, I mean, in a way, in a way, obviously, London Spanky are going to be tag team division, I think. But it's mm. kind of a cruiserweight match here. I think, it's a cruiserweight I think it, level match as well. Tajiri, fifty-seven. Good performance. Yeah, Bob says really good. Right. Um, so it's, it's, it's... Smackdown. Then um, you went one on one. We've gone Mark Henry versus Val Venus which gets a 56, so a similar sort of level, just below. But both, you know what, in-ring form is 53, in-ring form is 51, a 56. It's been boosted by something, maybe the announced team, road agent work. Either way, these guys have worked together. Oh, okay, that gives, me, that gives me an option for maybe booking him in the future. Because again, Mark Henry, I wanted to see how he was, how what level he's at, and if he's, he's at a pretty decent level, so I might better use him. He needs so. some work, but I mean... Yeah, but from yeah. I was I was I was worried it'd be a situation where it's like it needs work, but it's not like I need to do like a huge lot of work. If you know mm. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Exactly what you mean. I, look, that's pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, we did end the pre-show with a four-on-four mixed brand matchup. We could have done a battle royal thinking about it, but anyway, we've done. Okay, we've you done, can't, we've you done can't do two in one show. Yeah, true, true. Um, so it's four baby faces versus four heels. I'm just going to click straight into it. Um, for a, again a 56 all a similar level pretty good mid card level um, yeah. we did Stevie Richards Billy Kidman Maven and Spike Dudley versus Scott Steiner Al Snow Johnny Stamboli and Rob Conway um, the best performer Scott Steiner with a 65 that's not really a surprise if I'm honest no. but uh, 54 from Billy Kidman well, the was, it, was, it, was, that for, was that 40 for Stam was it Stamboli uh, 40 for Stan Bowley is the lowest. 42 for Stevie oh. Richards. 42 for Spike Dudley. 46 for okay. Maven. 45 for Rob Conway. 52 for Al Snow as well. So don't don't slouch on Snow, you know. Yeah, of course. Got to love Al Snow. But um, yeah, so that's the pre-show. So I that's guess we're going to kick, Let's get kick to the show off. We're going to kick the show off with the video package, aren't we? All the biggest stars, yeah. which gets us a 77. Okay. Lack of anything interesting happening. Yeah, kind of. We do. I mean, it's a video package, right? So it is what yeah. it is. Um, and the opening match, well, before the opening match, we've got a segment. We are doing the, um, yeah, we're doing the numbers thing, right? So I'm just going yeah. to click through and we'll go to 
these guys, these are all raw guys, we start with raw guys, in, in a tumbler, Shawn Michaels picks his number, gives a gives a look that we, look, we, we can't judge it, so we'll see. <coughs> Goldberg, no emotion, because it's Goldberg. And then Jamie yeah. Noble and Big Show come in, the knockout artists, as we're going to be calling them from now on. And Jamie Noble wants to pick Big Show's number, he picks Big Show's number, and Big Show does not look best pleased about the number, and storms off, so... Oh, 83 is pretty good actually oh, Jamie, what, what? Jamie Noble's in the segment remember yeah but uh, you, you, when you got like was it three big stars there yeah yeah pretty yeah, good pretty good uh, opening match up then and it's for the United States Championship we are starting big we're starting with the blue brand we are yeah. going for the vacant championship it is the final now um, if we can remember how they got there first of all Stu Christian the heel in the match he beat uh, who did he beat? I know he beat Eddie Guerrero. Did he beat someone he, else as well? He beat Eddie Guerrero in the semi final. I think he beat. Was it Rikishi? Yes. I think, oh God, I, mean, I haven't got I haven't got the exact uh, match uh, on member top of my head. But but, but I, Christian I think, has found his way to the final. And, and, and yeah, I think it was Rikishi. I think it was Rikishi and Eddie Guerrero to get to the final. I think Wolf Van Dam beat it. Um, Jericho was no. Yeah, I think it's Jericho and Shelton. Yeah. Cool. Think, okay. So. Um, obviously, Christian with his you know ninety five promo skills. Um, let's see if he, let's see if he can do it in, in, in a wrestling match, right? Uh, Stu, I'll let you do the big the big announcement. Okay. I mean, what we'll to do is you know amazingly, but as Carl Carl can do, he's very good at you know, doing the teasers of who wins matches. I'll, but, I'll, um, I'll, I'll take any win I can get at the moment. Thank you. I, I, I'm trying to be nice. Um, but, but, okay. So obviously, in this case, there is a new United States champion, and that is. Maybe a surprise, Christian is your new United States champion. And what made, as we pointed out before, is in, uh, was it, Philip, was it ECW country, if I remember? We are in ECW country. We're in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the Wells Fargo Center, which is where the 2004 Royal Rumble was held for the pay-per-views. We're going to stick to that. Yeah. The game's done you a bit dirty here. 74 segment rating. They didn't click. These guys have got no chemistry wrestling together. Mm, might have to, might, Sometimes might have that's what happens, but that's a blow. Oh. Yeah, but I mean, to be fair, though, it's... Uh, I love it's still got a 74, by the way. 56, 65. Where's the 74 come from? High storyline heat, I would think, right? I, I think... Increased due to the high when, high heat. So. Whoa. That, that's my mic. Honestly... But, um, but um, I'm just shocked. I'm totally shocked that I didn't get set up a better way. But no, it's only four one thing. It's not. That's, that's pretty much what whatever I was expecting when I think about it. Because it's like, um, is it Christian's kind of obviously found out in the save hit and miss? What I'm he's doing. I, I, look, I think if it doesn't have the chemistry issues, I think you're looking at an eighty, an early eighties. I think you've been hit by the chemistry issues there. That's tough. Uh, so I might, have to, I might have to think of another way. Might might have to think differently about that. But the finish think, though, talks through the finish. Um, yeah, so basically, the way I put this match is, but it's, you know, as you expect, two guys really won the win United States Championship. So it's a battle back and forth. But the ending of the match kind of ends with, um, was it, RVD goes to the top. Um, what was it? Hits the, was it hits the frog splash. And for a while, he's obviously, if, RVD is very good at selling, not missing a frog splash because he's just that damn good. And then obviously at this point, we've got, was it Christian going to the outside, um, going to get to the, the United States Championship. Chucks it in, was it? Chucks it. Chucks it in the ring, and obviously the ref's like, "What the hell?" Like you know. And when he's taking the towel away from him, and the ref is turned around, he gets a low blow by Christian, then he hits the unprettier, and gets the win. And he doesn't win. Uh, get, he would get booed, unreservedly in this match. But mm. I think it's Christian. He is that good at being heel. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, well, we we want the United States Championship to be a, a um, title at Build Stars or possibly. Be like the kind of proper second day title, so I thought, yeah, put it on Christian, but he doesn't, he doesn't, he, 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 he doesn't win clean. No, so. cheating to win in ECW country, absolutely mean. Okay, then we went straight then Ooh. to the WWE Championship on the line, and Brock Lesnar's pulled a seventy-eight out of the Hurricane because Brock Lesnar is a beast in carnage. Well, you were, you were right. I mean, I'll give you, give you credit. I mean, you're expecting. I was, I said Brock. Well, how long? It was only like a six-minute match, but Brock. Is badass into all four, so the idea of him get bit, um, getting at seventy eight out of five that's amazing. So yeah, Hurricane's so. actually off his game as well. Cheers, mate. Big big chance, and you've <laughs> fucked it. But, but he's still you know. got, he's still got a seventy eight. 
So to, that's more Brock is it? Yeah, yeah. I, I, look, at the end of the day, Brock Lesnar will have better matches, hopefully, in this save. Mm, but 100%. this is just a little bit of fun to get him through the rumble before some of the bigger stuff may happen with Brock Lesnar. And he won one clean six minutes. I'm not giving this too long. It's a clean win. I, I mean, I should have put pinfall because he's going to win with the F5 in theory. But yeah, this is just about putting Brock Lesnar over strong heading into WrestleMania season, basically. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, uh, backstage angle time. Um, 84 for this, pretty good. Uh, Eddie Guerrero and John Cena picked their numbers, and uh, well, you, you, you know what you know the, what we're doing here. This is Eddie Guerrero. Um, John Cena is going to pick a number. Look very very pleased. Eddie Guerrero is going to pick a number. Um, and 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 poker face wise, um, he distracts John Cena, and they end up swapping numbers. Actually, no, Cena can't look at his number, right? Or else it'll be, give it away. Yeah, or we'll have an idea like um, like they pick. Um... They both pick the numbers, but they like got Eddie like kind of tricks and go, oh, you know what, you know, let's swap, you know, yeah, have a bit of fun, you know, swap it so like they both pick and then like, I think that'd be better. Yeah, that works because they're both baby faces afterwards. So Cena can see his number and then obviously realizes it's not as a good one and he's like, ah, okay, <laughs> fair play, well done, you got me, type thing. Yeah, so it's just like it's not, it's not, we're not talking about Rick Flair level. Like yeah. He's just basically chasing him down the halls. Yeah, 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 this is two baby faces. Cena yeah. can respect it. Eighty four, pretty good. Um, and I think we're into another match. I've forgotten what... I haven't written it down, so we're just going to kind of go through. I actually think it's time for the Intercontinental Championship to be on the line, I believe. I think so. I think we remember putting that... Wait, what's it? Yes, because... Well, yeah, I think it, it is. It, it, I'm going to look stupid if it's not, but it is for the Intercontinental Championship. Will Bradshaw become a wrestling god or will the legend killer continue his hot streak? Your winner and... Still Intercontinental Champion for a 76. These guys have really, really done well. Randy Orton. Look, we made this the wild brawl match. You have to have a wild brawl type thing. And we thought yeah. Brad Shaw's the guy to do it. Proven by his 62. Really good performance from him. 69 from Orton is about what you'd expect without being amazing. Um, RKO following interference from Ric Flair. So it's not a clean win. Ric Flair, yeah, does the business. Evolution do the business. Randy Orton retains the Intercontinental Championship. This is much better than I thought it'd be. Yeah, I mean to be fair, it's um, a lot of the matches we're doing tonight are very like uh, what's the word for like the seventy seventy sixes, you know, mm. high mid to, to high seventies. Mm-hmm. It's um, that's good. So in theory, it should make the show a more complete show. So it should get a better end in theory. Maybe, maybe. But yeah, we're, I mean, I'm... look, Randy Orton's the future, right? Randy Orton's the future. Yeah. Bradshaw clearly has another storyline in the works. So we'll see what happens. More from Bradshaw later, anyway. Uh, okay, backstage segment time. Randy Orton and uh, Batista and Evolution come through the curtain and they come face to face with an old friend. This is, yeah, interesting. 89 as well. That would help. That's going to really help the show. Really going to help the show. Evolution um, reunites, so to speak, or do they? I mean, to be fair, wasn't it? If, if I remember just how we were talking about this before, it was basically like the old, like, was it the old meeting backstage and it's all a situation of like, uh, was it, what was it we decided? Was it Wick's kind of like, hey mate, how you doing type of it? Like seeing old friend. Yeah, Flair's happy to and see Triple H, but... The other two aren't. Well, but, well, Batista's just kind of stone face. Look, he's a, he's a monster, he's a machine at this point still, right? So he's not, he doesn't care, is the way he is with Batista. But yeah. Randy he's, Orton he's... quickly shepherds everyone away because Randy Orton's the leader now, not Triple what H. Be... True, and he was, if I remember one of your wars, he did bad mouth him, didn't he? He did, that's the point. Triple H is the past, Randy Orton is the now. And, uh, Whereas with Triple H, I'm assuming I went, like, I would assume that he would be, because obviously trying to book him as like a paranoid guy, hasn't got anyone. So he's, you see, he's kind of like down, he's like, he trained these, all these guys he kind of booked, brought up, basically. Yeah, it's every week, of course. It's like then just not acknowledging him. So I do like the idea might... of Orton when they're leaving. Just say, uh, so, by the way, that's how you uh, retain your championship. I hope you're taking notes, veteran, and leaving. That could so work in our forward Orton. That is a good one. I like that. So, that's good. Cool. Right, eighty nine. We're going to move on. Um, I can't remember what's next. So we're just going to click it. I'm afraid. Uh, okay, women's championship on the line then, and we have. 
not a new women's champion. Molly Holly defeats Trish Stratus. Talk us through this, G. This is interesting. 62 is pretty good. I mean, to be fair, yeah. I mean, to be fair, so you got 71 there, 46 for Molly Holly. But I mean, maybe you might have got better with Trish one. But I think at the moment, I don't. I don't want to take the title of Molly Holly because I do like Molly Holly as a wrestler. So, and I've got, and I think there's a, there's a story I can go there. Mm-hmm. But um, but basically, this match was basically it's going to be a situation where we kind of want to make Molly Molly look credible as a champion. Right. And um, the finish, and I know it's another distraction finish, but I think this will work for the story I want to do. Is where obviously um, you got uh, was it was it it's been teased that girl was it Jazz Jazz and Gail came in cahoots with um, Molly Holly. Mm. Um, they they distract the ref and then Molly Holly just like, you know, was it was it falls in the turnbuckle or do like a was it a roll up with the tights maybe maybe roll up with the tights is a better one, uh, and gets to win by cheating by putting on the tights and gets to win, um, by beating Trish um, that way um, it again it makes Champion look like she's she, she she finds a way to win obviously it protects Trish because she didn't win needed to, resorted to get two women to distract the ref to get a win so, but. I know it's a distraction finish, another one, but I think... Look, it's rumble season, right? Rumble season is the build towards WrestleMania. And people, if you look back at previous rumbles, how many clean finishes they do at the Royal Rumble? Let's be honest. Um, so no, I this works. Just... I quite like this. I do quite like this. And it's done It's done really well for this for these guys. Like, Molly's put a 45, but Trish has carried a big time here on, on pay-per-view. And, and that's great for the championship, right? Yeah, I think yeah, I think for me it makes me realise that if again, if maybe in the future I'm not going to bet when it might happen, it might not. If she wins the title, that means that when she be, if she becomes champion, it's a good thing. Yeah. So, yeah. and just Molly Holly being in the same ring helps her as well. So it this works all round. So yeah, good but sixty two, I'm happy with that. Right, more backstage segments. The APA had a backstage segment for fifty eight. Now, look, it's not a great segment, admittedly, but. It's an important one. Bradshaw fuming after losing the championship match after Ric Flair's interference. And he's asking the question here as he bumps into Ron Simmons. Look, if you were out there, maybe maybe he would have won the Intercontinental Championship, right? Maybe. Well, it, well I mean, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that Evolution was, I would assume Evolution was out there with Randy Orton with during Orton, the match. Yeah. So where was so, his backup? Right, I get it. Yeah, so... Bradshaw's blaming Ron Simmons. Ron Simmons just looks at him with a bit of disgust and says, you know what? Maybe I'll see you in the Royal Rumble. And uh, that's it. That, that's it. Just just threading the needle with these two a little bit. Threading the needle. I think we've got another backstage segment. So we'll I think go so. It. so we don't. Sorry about oh, that. Uh, Rey Mysterio retains the, the Cruiserweight Championship for a 70. This is not as good as I thought it'd be. Chavo hasn't. Ooh really raised his game here. Ray Mysterio 72. I mean, for the Cruiserweights, it's pretty good, 70. I, got, I can't complain too much. What, what, were you spe- were you spe- like a maybe? When, I thought uh, this might hit the similar sort of levels of a 76. I thought Chavo might put in a sort of 65. And Ray, on the pay-per-view, maybe could have pulled out an 80. But I think I'm asking a little bit too much for him. Well, for 74 Cruiserweight match, that's really good. I think yeah. that's a good one. Yeah, so Ray Mysterio uh, retains the championship. And obviously, at this point, they're both faces, which isn't helping it. Remember that. Um... That might but be, that there might, is, maybe that's there is a point to the to the match of here. It's kind of a tainted win in a way, but I wanted to. I put clean because it is a clean win in my head. Rey Mysterio beats Chavo, but during the match there will be a ref bump, and in that ref bump, Chavo will beat Rey Mysterio one, two, three with a pin, but the ref isn't there to count it. All right. Okay. Would it be? Would it be? Would it just be like? Um, hits his finisher. I can't mean what what his finisher hits is. His or finisher, what? Los Guerreros, whatever it is, was that? Whatever it is, right? Hits his finisher. Um, one, two, three. Chavo pins the cruiserweight champion, but the referee wasn't there to count the pin. The referee is pulled to his feet by Chavo, who's complaining at this point, right? Getting into his face, being aggressive, he's frustrated. And Chavo turns round into a drop kick from Rey Mysterio at six one nine. The West Coast pop, fine. And the one, two, three, Rey Mysterio retains the championship. Okay, so so is it more of a situation you want it to be a visual? Okay, Chavo Guerrero had a visual pin on Rey Mysterio. As far as he's concerned, he should have won the, the Cruiserweight Championship tonight. Okay, I, but I like it. It's, it's, but I like the way it's like he's got a point that I like. You know, it's like he actually had, did have him beat if it wasn't for the ref bump type thing. Yeah. I like so, that. I like that. So it's all, all going into what we're doing with Chavo. Um, then there'll be more on that 
on Monday Night Raw. So let's let's see how it goes. Okay, um, there is another backstage segment now. Um, Christian cuts a promo promo um, talking about Rob Van Dam talking about winning the US title. An 80 rate promo. I mean, it's not great from Christian. We know he can do better, but <laughs> I love that. I love that. It's like was, was it, he's put high expectations now. It's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Is, it, is it doing an 80? It's like that's. Christian, come on! I like I would... Christian. At last year on your own, mate. Come on. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it, it, this would just be more of a, like um, similar promos we've been in the past with the whole thing with him going. Well, you know, I've done it for my peeps. You know, I won the US champion. I'm going to be your champion of the continent. I'm going to be, and I'm going to, I'm going to hold this title for a very, very, very long time. So you better get used to it, type stuff. So yeah, so I, I think about ATF. Normally that'd be great, but. High, high, high praise, high bar for Christian. Uh, Twitch chat just pointed out Rob Van Dam dragging the promo down. Obviously, can't be Christian's fault. Um, okay, um, I can't remember if it's matching yet, so we're gonna go as in if it's match. It is gonna be for the world championship. It's Triple H and Kurt Angle. This is the the match that the pay per view is clinging on. If we're honest, mm, we're hoping it gets at least like we've the given 18... them time. We've gonna make it an epic. Let's just see what it does. Let's react. <sighs> I don't know if there's an angle though, so let's let's see. I'm gonna click next segment. There was an angle. I knew it. Chavo cut the promo <laughs> and Ray complaining about the the the, uh, the the result of the match of what happened. We'll pick up more on Raw, but Chavo gets a promo here complaining that he's been screwed. And he's Let, not wrong. Let's get to the world championship. <laughs> it's okay. definitely now. Who's gonna? And. I mean, you can give it the big thing. The winner. Okay. And. and. Oh, one more, one more, one more. Oh. There we go, there we go. There. Oh, what a mess. Yes. I'm so happy that got the way. That's the kind of the way thing I was expecting, like yeah, an 80s. But the funny thing is, like, with these two, you could, you could think they could do, like, that's good, but I think you can see them do better. They do better because, like, 93 from Trips, 97 from Angle. What's brought it down? Could it be? Could it, I mean, is, it, it, I haven't put any weird angles. Is low, the low morale. Is the, are the penalised due to the storyline low heat, apparently? Low I mean, heat. I, just, really? I don't agree with that. Been nice to being done to a crowd. That, so we, we've worked the crowd too much a little bit. That's what's brought it down. But it's 87. 87 is fantastic. Match of the night, I would think. Possibly the save? I don't know yet. I don't uh, know if we've done we, a bit. We can take a look off. off, off uh, we can take a look on the stream but, in a moment. But that's fantastic. And uh, he retains the title clean. Yeah, I mean, as much as... Um, this is what I mean. So these are the kind of matches that can do that. You can do like clean finishes for the heels because again, sometimes the heels have to win clean. Mm-hmm. I always believe that because you got to show their credibility. Better heels are better when they've got credible. They beat people, cred, you know, clean. Mm. That's me. But, um, but anyway, this match was kind of like, as you expect, battle. As this is epicness, you know, but all the finishes, near fall after near fall, you know, hitting like Triple H hitting a pedigree angle, hitting angle slam, both kicking out. All that kind of stuff. We even get a bit where was it ankle? Was it ankle locks in the ankle lock? Mm-hmm. Almost tap, just you know, just about to tap, and you know it doesn't. You know, we like he doesn't tap. It just gets to the ropes. Uh, but this is kind of a, a, f- a few that I think can really be enhanced by having blood, right? Because when I'm thinking of this match, I was thinking of like maybe you know Triple H, McFoley type level where it could it could get it could get that violent. Okay. But um, but I like like I don't know. It won't get in like chairs or anything like that, but. But it were like the idea, like they, they battle so much, like maybe thrown into the ring post or something. It's like mm-hmm. opens up. Could it just make it more of an intense match, I would think. And that's no, the kind no, of matches I, want. I totally agree. I, th- I think this is brilliant. This is a, I mean, it's, you know what? It's it's top, top, top match. I can't. I I'm so glad it's on the pay per view and not on a SmackDown. That's all I'm saying. Brilliant. Match. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, to be fair, it ends with um, Triple H hitting the second pedigree for the win. So it, it takes two to be angled at. Mate, in a field but protect him right well I mean yeah Triple H keeping the title then what does that mean for the Royal Rumble we know a Smackdown guy's going to win it that's the only match left we're going to do a couple of angles first though backstage Stuart, sorry sorry to interrupt Stuart I'm, I'm, I'm hearing I'm hearing there's a bit of a commotion backstage with the women's division um Oh, I got to be honest. They're getting good. I like the wings. Uh, but basically, um, yeah. So basically, a situation where it's like the, the thing with the whole backstage, and you just got basically tri- was it tri- Trish Stratus and Leo and, and Molly Holly, Gail Kim, Jazz, all the women that I've been kind of booking for the last month, last couple of weeks, is kind of in a ball because obviously uh, with the whole situation, what happened in the women's match earlier in the night, basically the battling, beating the grab. But 
beating the crap out of each other. But because it's a three on two, the numbers games catches up with Trish and Lita, and we end basically end with them being like beat on the floor, beaten and I wouldn't say bloodied, but like kind of beaten on the floor with a lot of like you know medical staff and all that checking on them because the um, the heels have got the upper hand because uh, they're outnumbered. Well, so, um, the wildness yeah. of the SmackDown Women's Division, right? One more segment for the Rumble. Uh, we're doing old school Rumble promos because I love them and I will forever love them. So a load of guys get a bit, get 10 seconds or so to say they're going to win the Rumble. Um, it's done 77, so that's not bad. A load of guys that are in the Rumble, Shawn Michaels, Goldberg, Booker T, Kane, Jericho, Storm, Benjamin, Hardcore Holly. It's fine. It doesn't matter. As such, it's just a way to, to put these guys' personality over. But it's time for the Royal... Sorry. <coughs> it is now time for the Royal Rumble. Stuart, can you uh, explain the rules? Um, What, the exact specific it's, rules? I want, to know, I want to hear it exactly as it's said by Mr. Howard Finkel. Well, I couldn't do, I couldn't do it with that class and that finesse of Howard Finkel. But if I remember the rules... Because you know, if we're watching it for so many years, was it? Is it was it one? What was it? Two? Was it two? Enter every? Was it couple? That like 10, 15 minutes? Well, like every ten minutes. Two two men will enter every ninety seconds. Ninety seconds. That's the one. Yes, um, and two. It changes, so don't um, Yeah. Yeah. Two, 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 two men will enter every ninety seconds. Um, uh, the winner will be the last man stand it. No, sorry. Eliminations occur. Where eliminations occur when you throw your opponent over the top rope with both feet hitting the ground. Shawn Michaels, I'm watching you. Um, um, uh, and the, the winner of the match will be the last one standing and will go on to WrestleMania for a world championship match of his choice. Yeah. Uh, I mean... okay, okay, so. Here we go. Okay, Rumble. Yeah. Um, I'm going to click next and it's going to reveal the winner and then we'll talk about some notes that we've got. Yeah. Stuart, as the winner of the month, you got to pick the Royal Rumble winner. So your Royal Rumble winner is... To surprise to no one, I would guess from anyone watching, is... Eddie Guerrero is your winner of the 2004 Royal Rumble. Um, With 79... um... That's pretty good for a Rumble, you know. Considering the Bashams are in it, Rene Dupree's in it, Mark Jindrak's in it. Well, we don't have shock. We don't have. We didn't do shock. Well, not shocks. Like kind of we didn't surprises. Do shock. We kept it all, all, all the roster at the time because we're just getting to grips with the database, right? Maybe two thousand five Rumble. We may, but we'll see. Um, look, there's a couple of there's a couple of of notes. Let's work from the start of the match to the end. Okay, so I've got written down here. John Cena is number one in the Royal Rumble. Okay. Okay, that actually make, uh, that makes that segment even more cooler now. Yeah. I like that. I like that. John Cena, number one in the Royal Rumble. But you can see here that John Cena has gone from number one to lasting until the final four. So John Cena's been the the uh, the the oh, what's the word? It's gonna kill M- me. MVP. No, no, where, where where they last the longest in the match, the the Iron Man of the match. Yeah, John Cena okay. is the Iron Man of the match. Um, but number two, and I don't know if you already had a plan for number two, and we can talk about it. Um, but I had a good idea that maybe we do Batista as number two. I'm not against that. I mean, to be fair with me, my kind of like notes in the match it's not really on who's number one number two more of like eliminations type thing yeah but um, but, but, but you notice batista has lasted until the final two so these two were the iron men of the match and batista gets a massive rub here batista got the most eliminations he's gone from number two to the final two and what he has done here he's proved himself in a way because he's lasted longer than randy orton and rick flair so it sets so it sets up that possible tension that we don't might happen it's, soon. It's, it look, it's just so something else to throw in there that hey look, do you remember the Royal Rumble when you know? So it, it's a thing they can do, like um, that you could when it possibly happens next year, it would have more credit if it does go that way. But I like I like little teases like that. Like you could, it's a thread you can pull on um, when during the time you wanted it. 
Um, I'm going to look through your notes as well, if that's okay, and just say a couple. I mean, you said here Lance Storm looking good. So Lance Storm, I'm assuming, will go quite early as well and have a good run through the Rumble. Yeah, I, I just think because obviously he's um, as I've booked him against high profile matches since Triple H and um, Kurt Angle, and I just think he's got potential and he's and he's performed well enough. So I think in this, I want to I want to show that it's like this is not just a fluke thing that you know Lance Storm is like yeah this guy's probably on his best run of his career type mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. So. Uh, but he's still, but he's like, his something's missing that maybe he might enter a storyline. But yeah, um, yeah, like stuff like I'm um, kind of st- keeping setting up for the stories I've done, like maybe like the Dudleys uh, taking out the uh, Bashams, uh, Harker Holly taking out um, Billy and Chuck type stuff, you know, it's that kind of stuff. Um, I did do this for, I don't know if this could work, but before Kofi was a thing, but I like the idea of Shelton Benjamin doing a Kofi moment. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. I think he's got the athleticism to do it as well. I mean, you could, you could I, I quite like the idea of, of him doing the, he lands on the, um, the the, the barricade. And yeah, because walk get, back through. I think that that will work here. I think it just works. Because Shelton Benjamin is just like he's. Oh my God, why did how did they mess up Shelton Benjamin? Oh, I do not know. So but um, how are you going to mess him up? Is it, anyway, um, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, that's what I mean. I've I've got a few, a couple more here. Um, Big Show is quite early in the match. Mm. Jamie Noble at ringside. Um, Big Show is going to have a good run in the sense of he's going to get a few eliminations when he's there, and then Big Show is going to have ev- he's going to have everyone beaten down in the ring when the clock ticks down five, four, three, two, one. Here comes the money. Here comes the money. Shane McMahon is in the Royal Rumble to take care of the big show. Shane McMahon comes in, Batista's a little bit stunned to see him, and the distraction, look, Shane doesn't eliminate the big show. The man who eliminates the big show is going to be Shawn Michaels. But it's without... because of, of, of Shane McMahon. It can be anyone else. It doesn't have to be Shawn, but it's because No, of but Shane. I mean, like, is it is it is, because it's the big show here, does, is it everyone else eliminates him, or is it more yeah, like it Shawn can does be, it? Himself? It can be a few, or it could be. I mean, this could be one of Batista's. Actually, you could put this one of Batista's I, I, over I, his strength. I, I was thinking you were going to say Batista because obviously yeah. he's got the most elimination. Getting one of the biggest guy in the match yeah. would be a yeah, yeah, huge that, that scout. Would absolutely work. Um, um, I'm going to talk about my final two, and then we'll get on to your couple of things because your things are in towards the end. Um, Kane has a moment with Randy Orton in the match. Kane is going to eliminate Randy Orton and Randy Orton is going to come back in to eliminate Kane in revenge. Now, Kane nice. is a heel at this point. I would, I would say he's mad, but we're, I guess in, for trying to antagonize uh, and uh, go after Kane, but you know. It's more that Randy Orton's a hothead at this point. Yeah, that's true, but I just I just think, i it got to be honest, I'm intrigued to see if that's a story going forward because that would be a fun story to see we'll if... See. Ha- See, we'll we'll see. Yeah, um, and finally, Booker T. Now, Booker T has been the emotional core of the build towards the Royal Rumble. He says he needs to win this to prove that he is ready for his WrestleMania moment. He he has a while he goes through, but what I've got written here is that Booker T is eliminated. He hangs on. He gets thrown over. He hangs on. He looks like he's going to eliminate, um, and then two other. I mean, it doesn't have doesn't, doesn't matter who it is. It can be a couple of SmackDown wrestlers. Two other wrestlers in the match are doing their thing as Booker T hangs on and they end up bumping him off off the apron. So he slips off the apron, so to speak. In quite, okay. in quite a... Uh, everyone, I want everyone to feel sorry for him because it, it, it's, it's a harsh elimination. And for someone who wants it this bad to get eliminated by a piece of bad luck is a bit frustrating. True. Okay. But again, it still looked good. It still looks good because it's obviously it's a mistake and not anything else. Yeah, but it's just more about playing on the emotions. So you've got a couple more other things. So uh, the Dudleys and the Bashams. Uh, yeah, well, we said, we said earlier, get one of those. Um, I mean, I like the idea of just like the both, they get eliminated, the Dudleys eliminating both at the same time type thing. Because again, we've talked about the Bashams a lot. <laughs> that, um, yeah, it's the Bashams. We, we don't, they don't have to be in there too early. And also it continues their storyline maybe if I wanted to, Open that thread as well. Mm-hmm. Due to Bashing Studleys, uh, the one I kind of the other one I kind of haven't mentioned is the bit with like Lance Storm gets eliminated by when they do pre. We kind of set up those little little where have we there? And obviously, if um, if 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 Lance Storm's going to be that guy that everyone's going, ah, oh, good, like he could do it and do it, and then like people start to believe in him, yeah. and then boom, 
when AJ Dupree just eliminates him out of nowhere. Big heat. And it's just, and, and you get hit like Especially heat. Especially Philadelphia like, with the ECW. Yeah, so he like it would work, but hopefully it would. But yeah, so um, but kind of my next note. So basically, what we're our final four? Like we, we discussed this off camera. Our well, final four. Yeah, uh, the so the final four is. I mean, before we get to the final four, what one thing with rumbles, we got to decide on number thirty. For me, if it was a raw guy, it probably would be Goldberg, but I'm not against maybe it being Eddie here. Actually, maybe I mean, maybe that was the swap between Cena and Eddie. I mean, it works. I think I'm, I didn't I, again think of it like that in a sense because um, who got number thirty and all that kind of stuff in the rumble. But I'm not against that because again, it just it just shows that um, you know Eddie's getting a bit lucky. So like the, you know, a bit lying, cheating, and stealing is um, starting to work work for me. And, a bit and, more. and that's going to then pay off because the final four: uh, Eddie Guerrero, Chris Jericho, Batista, and John Cena. Now, of early in the night, Cena and Guerrero swap numbers, and they can have a little moment where they're like, where Cena's like. Okay, yeah, you got one over me earlier, but I've waited for you. I've hung on in there, and it doesn't matter what number you've given me, I'm here now, type thing. I quite like that those two are linked now, just completely by random tonight, but it works, right? Final four then. Cena will be eliminated fourth. Okay, I think. And then it's into Eddie and Jericho. Uh, Yeah, this one I was going to, well, when I wrote it, it's supposed to be the finish, but again, we, we kind of did the same where we kind of wrote, like done the Raw and SmackDown stuff and kind of put it together, right? Mm-hmm. But I mean, what I was thinking with this one is it more a situation of battling on, like you know, like um, Kurt and Eddie Guerrero when they had the World Rumble in '04 on SmackDown, if you remember. Vaguely. But basically, yeah. they're basically battling on the floor and they're both trying to suplex each other over the top rope. Right. But but Eddie in that sequence like lifted him up, hold him up for a suplex, vertical suplex, and then dropped him over the top rope. Yeah. So I like that idea because okay. it's like. Both Ed, Christian for I mean, Chris, it's just Jericho for he would be able to outdo him. Oh, I've got you in a suplex, but Eddie outsmarts him again, and again that can set up if I do another few there. Or and the base he looks, Eddie looks, yeah, it just looks good. So that's how Chris Jericho will be eliminated Ed, uh, with the final, Ed, final Eddie two. Eddie wrestled him, which is quite yeah. nice. Um, and and Chris Jericho's out, leaving the final two of Eddie Guerrero and Batista, which I actually really like as a final two because. You tell the story throughout the match that Batista's gone from number two to the end. He's got all these eliminations. He's eliminated the big show. He's eliminated lots of big guys, right? Mm. So he's an unstoppable monster that has come from nowhere. And, and, and at this point, you tell the story on commentary like, look, Eddie's great, but can, can he really stop this man on this night? I mean, how many, how many eliminations would you say he had? Like, is he beat the record of Kane? Or do you think that's a bit too much? Or be, or be close to it? I, was I don't think he'll quite get the record, but what I've got in my head is he's eliminated the likes of, like we say, Big Show, Goldberg, Shawn Michaels. He can eliminate all of them. Do you know what I mean? Some big uh, names he's eliminated is what I'm trying okay. to say. So, 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 it's, so it's again like as Eddie is always good at being booked out as the underdog in this fun in this final encounter. Yeah, basically. and that's what I mean. It plays perfectly into Eddie Guerrero being the underdog. These guys have maybe five, six minutes on their own, not too much more because Batista will be struggling in theory at that point. Um, and you can play Batista's power game versus Eddie's speed. And Eddie, Eddie, look, Eddie's got to outsmart Batista to win this. I, I mean, the only thing finish. I can think of is. Is a situation of like um, this is my Tom Hanna, You can tell me if it's bad. Is do a situation where he's doing like a gorilla press slam, mm-hmm. and he's gonna he's gonna be like showing strength to like chuck Eddie over the top rope. Yeah. But then all of a sudden he, he gets Eddie wiggles his way out, finds uh, was it um, yeah, gets way out, lands on his feet and then drop kicks Batista and he goes over the top to follow. Yeah, him. something like that. Or what I animize maybe a Batista had him up for a Batista bomb. Eddie counters with a hurricane runner and then clothesline over the top. Either of those two would work. Yeah, Eddie, I mean. Eddie, I, Eddie out wrestling, out smarting a very young Batista here is the right call, I think. Yeah, using the, it, it, we we all forget that at this point Eddie was still a vet, was considered a veteran, mm. you know, in a way. So like you could sit there and say he uses his years of experience to outfox everyone in in this match yeah. before the match in, in in and the match in itself. So just Eddie looks great in this. So in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, former ECW alum alumni Eddie Guerrero wins the Royal Rumble. He's going to WrestleMania. But will he be facing off against this man? Triple H comes on the stage to just sort of give him a look. Eddie Guerrero celebrates and he points at this WrestleMania sign, obviously. 
it's got to be done. It's got to be done. I mean, they've done it too much over the years, but like it's got to be done. And then we just, yeah, we just set up that that's pop. Look, we're not saying this is the match. Triple H no, have probably but... got to get through No Way Out, I'd imagine, Stu. But Eddie Guerrero is going to WrestleMania. And right now, the world champion is Triple H. Yeah. And I just, I think I like the idea that, again, whatever, whoever he goes against, he's always going to be the underdog. So. Yeah, we've kind so, of missed um, a trick here. We probably should have put Brock in it as well. That would have been cool. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It's all about yeah. putting the focus on Eddie. And that's a Royal Rumble. I don't know what this is going to get. This is an interesting one. We've got some really high should... ratings at some places, but we've also got some 55s, remember? If, if, if the game goes the way that I think my my, my game's gone, where it's, like, it's kind of been okay, and then one or two 80s or 90s segments have like, catapulted it, so maybe it might do the same here. Maybe. Let's find out. The Royal Rumble, our first way for you of the save, gets... A eighty-one. Okay, that's lower than I thought it would be. Yeah, I thought that'd be like a like a like eighty-nine, maybe like a ninety. I, I, I thought we got an eighty-four, eighty-five, but eighty-one's not bad. To be fair, it's a pretty good pay per view, and considering this is the Rumble where we're building stuff, I'm excited for WrestleMania. That's pretty good for a Rumble show. Twitch chat says, and they're right because like you got a Rumble match. That's a really good Rumble match. Yeah, I mean, for, be, for this game, for this game, that's a really good run. And and the final angle to get like a good eighty odd, mm. like it just end the show on a high. But again, could could have got a low rating as you said because of the game. We kind of overdone it with stuff in the the pay per view matches. No, maybe, I wouldn't, maybe, maybe. I mean, it's interesting that the three biggest um, segments on the show all involve Triple H. Well, interesting. Well, Triple H, yeah. that is interesting. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, I mean. To be fair, it's, it's it's for our first show and for all we built for both our shows. I, I think I think it's a good. I would rather have a low weight and we have to build up to something yeah. than have a high weight and we have to can only go down. Right. So eighty one's a good a good level. I'll be honest. From a raw point of view, I knew this wasn't going to be a a star show, but the stuff we've done on Raw is all pretty good. Better than I thought it'd be. Brock and Hurricane getting a seventy eight. Autumn Bradshaw is the like. That's the steal of the show for me, in a way. I wasn't expecting it to be that good. And the Cruiserweights is okay, 70. So, yeah, from a Raw side, I'm pretty pleased. SmackDown's had some really good ratings. We've come together to put on a good show. And now, now we'll become enemies yet again. And now we come in. Yeah, I'm going to beat you this time. It's happening. You know what? For a first pay-per-view, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. 79 for the uh, Rumble match, by the way, is incredibly good. And I think we've done pretty well. I think we'll have better pay-per-views. But a nice way to start. But now, no, 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 look, look. We're teamed together today. Teamed together in this episode. Let's end that right away. We move on. Thursday. Wednesday, sorry. I changed the days, didn't I? Changed the days. Wednesday, 4.30. Week 1 of February. The build to no way out. We go again. We set the scores level again. And we go again. Who's going to win February? And who's going to win a no way out main event? We'll start to find out. On Wednesday. If you like the video, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to the channel for a whole lot more. And until next time, the Royal Rumble is done for another year. Now we move on. Until next time, peace. Come on.